Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is the Anime Man. Now, if you guys know me, I'm somewhat of a anime figure collector myself. I've been collecting anime figurines for quite some time now, and I think I know my way around the anime figure world. Although, in saying that, the anime figure world is very deep, very extensive, and of course, I'm not saying that I'm the biggest professional when it comes to anime figures out there. But considering that your boy has, what, a 10,000 plus dollar collection of anime figurines ranging from all sorts of boys and girls to everything in between, I would like to think that I have at least some liberty of say when it comes to the professionalism of anime figure collecting. Now, I realize not everybody who watches my videos necessarily is into collecting anime figurines because at at the end of the day, it is rather an expensive hobby. But I also do know that there are some hardcore weebs out there who love collecting anime figurines, and I'm sure seeing those kinds of weebs with these extensive collections has at least driven some of you guys to maybe start considering collecting anime figurines. And that's good and all, because there is really a wide range of anime figures that you can go out and start collecting. But at the end of the day, with every popular thing, there is always a bootleg. And the concept of bootleg or fake anime figurines really got me interested. So today I actually went out and bought some fake ass anime figurines. And do, I guess, a quick little explanation or experiment to see if they really are indistinguishable between the real ones. And at the same time, hopefully while reacting to these horribly made crappy and cheap for a reason fake anime figurines, I can at least educate you guys to be able to tell the difference between a fake anime figurine and a genuinely good and real one. And to overall just firsthand show you guys that no matter how cheap these fake anime figurines can be, if you compare it to the real more expensive ones, it ain't worth it. Hey, but before we jump into the video, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Girl Cafe Gun. It's an ARPG development game that integrates TPS combat and live 2D interaction, management, and other elements. The story is about the outbreak of the disaster triggered by Source Power. In the game, players will act as commander and join with the Girl Warriors of the Zero Eight team to fight together. Immerse yourself in beautiful graphics powered by Live 2D to build your dream team by collecting character cards. You can enjoy the diverse bonding system with high fidelity social interactions, including tickling, gift giving, moment sharing, and private messages to form an intimate bond with the girl you love. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll say it again because it's important. You can tickle your waifu in this game. Now that's innovation. Use multiple fighting skills and strategies by switching three characters in one team to outwit the enemy with your intelligence. But it's not all fighting though. You can run your own virtual cafe with customized decoration and different coffee types to find your business sense and satisfy the needs of your lovely customers. And of course, let's not talk about the fact that the entire game has beautiful aesthetics, both auditory and visual, with the aid of some of the top voice actors in the voice acting game right now. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, then make sure to go down to the description description below to check out the game for yourself and make sure to use my gift code to gain all sorts of in-game rewards. Thank you to Girl Cafe Gun for sponsoring this video. Now on to the show. So I have five anime figurines. I actually bought about seven or eight, but uh, here's step number one of why you would consider not buying fake anime figurines. Three of them just straight up didn't even arrive at my front door. So we're going to be looking at the five that did manage to make it to my house one at a time. And let's start off with this one right here. So you can probably already tell through the plastic right there, but this is Naruto and Minato from the Naruto franchise, a double anime figurine. Now looking at this arriving at your front door should already be sending off some red flags because rule number one of a real anime figurine versus a fake anime figurine, real ones come in boxes. Fake ones come in cheaply clad plastic like this. So I'm just gonna rip this shit open and uh, let's, let's look at the damages. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's just pull all of this out. Oh my god. Well, for starters, again, immediately a lot of red flags are being uh, pulled up there. Jesus fucking Christ. Are you kidding me with this? So here is Naruto without his legs and here is Minato. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? Hello, everybody. I'm Minetu. Dude, that face is absolutely horrendous. Jesus Christ. So rule number two of immediately identifying a fake anime figurine is that uh, real anime figurines don't 
come in parts like this. Yes, some of the more extravagant, bigger figurines may come in parts such as, you know, for instance, detachable parts like these kunais, for example, being able to go into the hand of the figurine like that. That's completely acceptable. And the fact that the figurine itself comes detached from the stand so that you can place it in. But almost never have I seen a figurine with its fucking legs detached like this. I mean, I don't know why they decided to detach the legs. I don't know how hard it was to just, you know, place the legs in. Why are there so many leg variants? Oh wait, there aren't even any leg variants. So I assume these are Naruto's legs and these are Minato's legs. And I thought there was going to be more legs than this, but no, these are literally the only legs in this fucking set. Two pairs of legs for two people. Again, why? All right, but let's just uh, let's just build it together, I guess. My God. Again, how hard was it to just you know package it like this with the legs attached? It would have been a lot more convincing if the legs were actually attached, but they weren't. You can just fucking take these legs off like a goddamn madman. I'm having a real hard time even getting this into the leg holes right there. Get in, you son of a bitch. So another thing that you might notice when opening up a fake anime figurine, and not all fake anime figurines are like this, but uh, usually the fake ones really smell like shit. And by shit, I don't mean like poop. I mean like you get that very like chemically kind of smell, the, the obvious very fake kind of smell. And it's not very pleasant at all. You'll immediately smell it. Oh, yeah, oh. <coughs> yeah, that is, like, plasticky as fuck. It smells like burning plastic, in all honesty. Okay, so here they are, Minato and Naruto in their finest, crappiest glory. Now, look, granted, from a distance, these figures look pretty legit. I mean, you know, the form is good, in a sense. Like, it actually looks like the character. It's not until you actually take a quick look at it where things start to get a little... Iffy. For me, the biggest indicator between a real and a fake anime figurine is that with real figurines, the quality of the paint is definitely one thing. And specifically, the quality of the paint in the hair. You might notice here with Naruto's hair, it's that it's just a straight up yellow build. There is no contouring of any sense, there is no shading of any sense whatsoever. They just got a yellow paintbrush and just went all out on it. Not to mention that the plastic cutting is actually pretty bad as well. You can actually see little chunks of plastic coming off of the hair right there, which is just ugh, gross. And again, the feel of it, like th this part of Naruto's jacket right here is very kind of sticky and gross. And and again, not very good. The end of this kunai here, there's a tiny little plastic blob hanging off the end of it. Like Naruto, you do realize you are not carrying a kunai. You are carrying a fucking hunk of metal. The fist as well just looks like absolute shit. Like it, it straight up reminds me of like Final Fantasy VII egg beater hand levels of fist. I feel again it becomes more apparent when you look at Minato for example. I mean for one the kunai you had to put in to his hand for some reason even though you didn't have to do that with Naruto so that doesn't make sense. The jacket here kind of looks real shit right here especially I mean look at this kanji in the back here. Like this was clearly fucking hand written by someone who probably barely graduated middle school and again you can see little bits of the red not being fully filled in right here very quick lazy paint job and again what can I say other than his fucking face it's so fucking cursed yeah I don't know what I was expecting with these I mean I can even see like little bits of like hair or fiber or something off of Minato's shoulders what is that I honestly don't even want to touch this I feel like I'm touching something that should set off a Geiger counter. Like, this looks like it came out of a fucking nuclear reactor in the wrong way. I can even see as well that the base here is, like, actually kind of scratched up a little bit. Like, it's not matted out or smoothed out in any way. Like, this looks like it had lived on a shelf for about 30 years, when in reality, I got this brand new, quote-unquote. Obviously, that buyer was talking out of his ass because there is nothing brand new about this other than it's a brand new piece of shit for me to add to the trash can. All right, be gone, thoughts. Let's look at the next one. How about we look at a anime waifu of a very, very big anime that have recently come out, a series that I'm sure many, many people watching this video want to buy figurines of. Demon Slayer. Here is uh, Kanao Tsuyuri from Demon Slayer, the apprentice of Kocho Shinobu. Uh, with her head decapitated, apparently. This is the kind of packaging that you see in gachapon machines in Japan. You know, those tiny, tiny capsule machines that you spin and you get the money out of. I've done many videos on those before. This is like a scaled up version of that. Immediately, you can tell that 
This is immediately fake because there is no gachapon machine out there that is this fucking size. Not to mention gachapon machines in Japan go anywhere between 100 yen to upwards of 500 yen. So that should already tell you how much this thing is actually worth. First of all, before I even put this together, look at this shit. I mean, just minus the fact that this thing feels sticky and that it doesn't have a head, but let's go through all of the things that are wrong with it. First of all, this is curved to shit. This should not be this curved. I don't even remember it in the show to be this curved. The paint job is so bad. I mean, there's like a little bits of like pink paint on the back of a scarf right there when there should be nothing of the sort. And here's the real nightmare fuel. And if you thought the close-ups of my fingernails were a nightmare, look at these hands, dude. Oh my God, it's disgusting. She's got like webbed hands. The other side too. Oh my, it looks like they're dripping. Her fingers are literally dripping. Again, there's little bits of yellow paint on her boots when there should be just completely white. There's little bits of white on her sleeve there. The paint jobs on the buttons just, you know, done in about three seconds with a tiny paintbrush. <laughs> and I just fucking realized this. Oh my god, the audacity to do this. Her ribbon right here is literally sewn on to her scarf and it's not even painted on the sides. They couldn't even be bothered to paint the sides of the ribbon red because they just expected you to look at the figuring from this angle and no other angle. All right, but let's look at the face. Oh, oh no. I mean, really. That's just horrible. The proportions are whack. Again, just a straight up black matte paint job on the hair, nothing interesting. At least they got like kind of the design right on the ribbon right here, but even then, like little bits of white blotches are all over this thing. Like, it's like they put this together and modeled it and painted it, everything before anything actually set or dried. Like, it, it, it literally just looks like they had to immediately get this done as soon as possible, like a fucking figurine speed run. I mean, yeah, again, this looks like it has been sitting on a shelf for ages. Probably a shelf that has direct access to an open window where the sun can just beam in and melt this thing to a blobby, plasticky, garbagey mess. Just to top off the shit cake, another thing that I just realized. Normally, even in real anime figurines, the base and the figure are two separate entities in the box. They are packaged differently. You rip usually the base open out, and then you slap it on normally. And usually, you know exactly which way it's supposed to go, either because the base is some kind of design on it that makes it obvious in the context, or the holes perfectly align with the holes in the feet. But with this one, um, it just straight up doesn't align unless I literally fucking spread her legs. So here are the holes right here, right? And here are the holes on her feet. Let me align this hole with this hole right here. I mean, do you see this? It just doesn't align at all. It's nowhere even close. I literally have to fucking spread her legs like that in order to get it going when it should just immediately fall into place. I shouldn't have to bend or push anything at all. Also, the plastic on her feet is so wobbly and so rickety. Like, if I went hard enough here, it could very easily just completely snap off from how soft it is. I mean, yeah, this is bad. This is really fucking bad. It looks horrible. Again, the holes don't even fit into the feet, so it's just not stable in any sense whatsoever. Really, really bad. But before we move on, let me give you some pointers on how you can identify a real anime figurine. Starting off with the box that it is inside of. Boom! So this right here is the Jibril uh, figurine. This is a Jibril Great War version 1 to 8th scale painted figurine from Good Small Company. I actually gave this away on my last video to one lucky viewer. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I give away real, authentic, fucking amazing anime figurines like this every month. So if you want to join in on that, then hey, make sure to like and subscribe. So there are actually a couple of things that you can immediately look for with the box of the figurine where it will really indicate to you whether this is in fact a real authentic figurine right from the get go. For starters, the thing you want to look for is logos and stickers of any kind that is plastered around the box. So in the case with this Jibiril figurine, you have actually a sticker of authenticity right there from Kadokawa as No Game No Life is a Kadokawa IP, there is a sticker right there of authenticity to tell you that this is a real Kadokawa publisher authenticated 
figurine. Sometimes it's just a logo that is plastered on the box. A lot of the times though, like this, this is actually a sticker that you can peel off that they plaster right before it ships out. So this already right here is authentic. Again, another thing you can look for is the logo of the creators of the figurine. So in this case, we have Good Smile Company right here. This is the proper Good Smile Company logo. A lot of fake anime figurines in boxes will not have these logos written on it. And here you go, you have another authentication sticker right on the back here. Again, this one you can peel off. And this one is actually holographic because the fake anime figurine publishers or creators are starting to get really smart with the way that they plaster on authentication stickers. So now most figurines actually, especially the new ones that come out, will actually have holographic stickers right here, which a lot of fake anime places will not do. Another great thing to look for is website names that link back to the publishers or distributors of the figurine. In this case, we got the Good Smile Company info website, which a lot of times they'll actually just be completely different and wrong most of the time. Sometimes it won't even show up on the box at all. Obviously another big factor is the quality of the box that it comes in. If the corners are ragged up, if the coloring is off in any kind, you should probably be a little bit wary of that as well. And again, another really easy indicator is the way that it is packaged inside of the box. And a lot of times, especially with the newer anime figurines, you can actually see inside of the box to get a quick glimpse of what the figurine looks like rather than just relying on the picture on the outside. Side here. So you can already tell that this is nicely packaged, the plastic is clean, there are no creases, it's not old, it's not flimsy in any way. This thing is completely solid inside this box, so even if you shake it around a little bit, it won't move around. A lot of fake anime figurines, obviously, they cheap out on the plastic covering and it'll actually kind of jumble around, sometimes just completely not be covered in plastic at all, so that's again another big red flag. But let's move on to the third one. I think this one is uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, it's really hard to tell, but I think that green is of Deku from My Hero Academia. Again, a lot of My Hero Academia figurines out there. Also a lot of fake ones out there too. Again, immediate red flag. This is coming in Gachapon figurine packaging and uh, oh geez. This one is also really freaking horrible. Oh, this one's like really sticky. Uh, I almost want gloves for this one, actually. Why is it so fucking sticky? Is it because it's the summer? Uh, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me with that. Dude. Okay, so I'm trying to put this together, right? And okay, usually you should just slot in normally. Wait, what? Why is it? Why is it getting in the way? Why are these things getting in the way? All right, I wonder if you can move these. Oh, oh my God. If I keep doing this, it, I think it's actually going to snap off. Look at how flimsy this is. And this isn't like a, a part that you can just attach and detach. Like this is properly glued in. But the fact that the plastic is this soft, dude, that's, that's actually filled. Wait, this one is rock hard. So is this one. So is this one. It's only this one. That's flimsy like this. Also, what the fuck is this like neck attachment angle? It shouldn't be slanted like this. That looks like it's just gonna, again, snap off completely. Also, I mean, Deku, bro, what, what, what the fuck happened to you, dude? You look horrible. This is like Deku after he just got COVID or something. Oh my God. <laughs> this doesn't even stay on the fucking body. Look at this. I put it in. Like, I'm not, I'm not even joking. Ready? All right, look, that's completely attached, right? Also, Jesus Christ, this plastic is so goddamn cheap. What? <laughs> oh my god, you cannot be serious with this. So I would assume that this part right here goes into the hole in the side of his ass right here, right? To make it look like he's kind of floating in the air. So, all right, let, let me try and fill it in. <laughs> it actually doesn't fit in. Like, that's incredible. This size does not fit the hole in here. Like, this isn't some fucking puzzle. Like, this should be an easy fucking fit. I didn't think these figurines could get worse, but it literally just got worse. Like, Deku's ass does not fit in with the base that Deku is supposed to be on. Like, I'm not an idiot or anything, guys. Like, I'm literally trying every angle possible on this ass just doesn't fit. There is nowhere else on his body that has a hole or anything like this, which is usually what these kinds of components in the base are used for. Like it genuinely is so bad 
or someone at the fake figurine like modeling place got the size of this hole wrong to this size. They made one hole bigger than the other. I mean, really, like, I can't believe it. They've actually turned a base completely useless. Not to mention that without the base, Deku's body doesn't even stick around. At least his head sticks around. Like, that's fine. The moment you try and attach the body, it looks good like this. <laughs> Deku, no! It, the paint isn't even dry on this. You know, when I was buying this particular figurine, I had a little bit of hopes for this, that it might just, you know, maybe almost try and fool me. Because considering that, you know, the body and the face and the pose is actually one of the best ones out of the five that I actually bought, this one is just like completely the worst. For one, the body doesn't fucking stay attached. And two, the base doesn't even fucking fit. All right, get this trash out of here. Let's look at the next one. I was looking forward to this one. So this one is uh, Sakura Miku, or you know, which is the Sakura version, the pink cherry blossom version of the infamous Vocaloid Hatsune Miku. And uh, man, I cannot wait to see. <laughs> Prepare for a nightmare in three, two, one. Ah! Miku, bro. What the fuck happened to you? What happened to your eyes, man? That looks like an animation error. Also, I'm sorry, but your headphone on your face just straight up look like a skinny penis. At least the hair is transparent and the correct color of pink and, and the paint is, they're using the correct colors. That's good. I mean, except for the cherry, like, blossom leaves. That, that is the weirdest shade of green that I've ever seen in my life. But first of all, this hair is so goddamn flimsy. This should not be moving this much. That, that, I, again, I can just go all the way up and it'll probably just snap. It's actually providing some give. Oh my god, it's so elastic! Also, again, there's little bits of, like, finer dirt around the neck, or, you know, what looks like to be just blemishing errors of some kind. Also, look at this, like, fucking... here. There is literally a gap between her knee socks and her thigh. And, like, not in a good way. You can actually see right there how and where they glued the knee sock layer onto the lower leg area. And it just looks horrible. It, it looks disgusting. One thing I can say, though, is that at least the base is somewhat different and kind of nice. Although, now that I look at it now, you can actually see, like, a shitload of scratches all over this thing. Like, it looks disgusting. It looks used. Also, the uh, feet, holes, just don't match up at all. Her feet is in a completely fucked up angle and is not perpendicular to the base whatsoever. So she's just kind of casually floating on top of a very you know, nice, different base. At least, though, she is on the base, unlike the fucking Deku figuring we just saw. But again, man, her face looks just atrocious, is the only way I can say it. And here's the thing that I don't quite understand, again, about people who fall into buying these bootleg fake anime figurines. Because the argument that I always hear from people who buy these kinds of bootleg fake anime figurines is, Oh, I'm not looking for the greatest quality ever. I'm just looking for something that's affordable. I'm looking for something that's cheap and good. I want my waifus on my shelves. I think a lot of people forget that not all anime figurines are expensive. Yes, the Jibril one I showed you earlier is some, you know, two, three hundred dollars. Like, yes, that is very high end and only for like the hardcore collectors out there. But there is actually a lot of figurines figurines out there that you can get at really affordable prices. For instance, we have this one right here. This is the Hatsune Miku collaboration with Taito Station, which is a arcade franchise here in Japan. And it looks super freaking adorable. She's in like her Taito Station staff outfit with the Taito Station logo. And immediately you can tell this one is real. Like immediately. Of course, you know, the fact that A, the proportions are all very correct and it looks just genuinely nice. Her face is nice. But also like, again, pay attention to the paint job in her hair. Like that is one really big aspect I feel that a lot of anime figurines, real anime figurines tend to take really close attention to is the fact that the hair movement, the hair flow, the hair structure, and the paint job of the hair with the lighting and the shading is so articulate and immaculate, even with a cheap anime figurine like this. Like this is a Miku 
figurine that you can only get from crane games at Taito Station. And resells of this, at least here in Japan, don't go for any more than $15 US. So please tell me why you would spend money on a piece of shit like this when you can pay just a little bit extra, not even too grandiose, not even something that'll make your wallet cry, and get one that is A, bigger, two, looks nicer, and three, is actually real and legitimate. Yeah, this one is horrible. Um, I'm sorry, Miku. I like Sakura Miku, but this one is just so funny. God, that face. I will never unsee this face from my goddamn nightmares. All right, and last but not certainly least, let's look at the fifth and final one. This one, I decided to go for something that's a little more underground. Like, obviously, right now, we've looked at some of the bigger franchises that uh, tend to probably fall more victim to the whole bootlegging thing. You got My Hero Academia, you got Demon Slayer, you got Hatsune Miku, you got Naruto. But this one is uh, a little more on the niche side of things. It's not exactly that uh, you think of when you think of anime figurines, and uh, I was really surprised that they actually are making a bootlegged version of this character from this franchise. So here you go guys, this is Miyazono no Kaori from Your Lie in April, and uh, immediately, I mean, god this is horrible. For one, uh, her fingertips are just smeared in this black shit? It, it, it looks like she was working on her car before rocking up to the hill to play the melodica. Two, the lips and the eye paint job are really bad. And third of all, at least they got kind of the uh, portrayal of the, the shading of the hair right here. But for one, this top part of her hair is a really sticky. But then you go to the back here as well and it's, uh, yeah, just a single block paint job that looks kind of like shit. Also, can we talk about this base? Uh, why are there blotches of blue paint all over the goddamn place? I don't know. These pigeons or doves that come with it are probably the best thing I've seen out of this entire video so far, but still. And this melodica, I mean, it's hard to see it in this video, but uh, if you're holding this in your hands like me, you would know that this thing is A, really flimsy, and uh, B, the paint job on this is absolute shit. Also again, the hole for the leg and the actual leg position does not match unless I literally fucking pull her leg all the way around and shove it in. Why do they do that? Also, I'm trying to figure out right now, how the fuck do I get this melodica in between this tiny little gap? So I thought, oh, maybe I can just like slightly move the hands over. Oh, it should not move this far, dude. That's not how arms work. Like, okay, so maybe like, like, like that, I guess. How the fuck? Oh, maybe you put the fingers in it like that. Oh, it's like that. There we go. Again, this arm should not be moving this much. There are some figurines where you can move an arm or some kind of piece of clothing out of the way to fit in or slot in another thing, but the real anime figurines, for one, shouldn't move around this much because they don't use cheap rubbery plastic like this, but two, there should be a really, really tight fit so that the thing that you are attaching in between will not budge once it is in. Whereas with this, I can easily just slip this thing out. I mean, you can say that it's a good thing, but I mean, you know, when will you ever take the melodica out from this particular figurine? I don't know. Also the plastic stands that used to hold these pigeons. Oh my god, this plastic is so flimsy, I can easily snap this. And two, I don't know why these pigeons had to be separate from the base. I mean, you could have put little stand holes on this base here to make it kind of branch out and turn into just one big thing, rather than making this just its own separate base and having to place it precariously around the actual figure. Like, why, why do they do that? Also, I'm pretty sure this is the scene where Kaori is standing at the top of a hill playing the melodica when Korsuke first finds Kaori. So why did they use this gross, like, peach looking thing. It looks like she's standing on an areola. And you can't use the argument of, oh, you can't put grass on a base for a figurine because, uh, yes, you freaking can. This Atelier Riser figurine, which I gave away uh, the other month, does exactly that with its base. It even has a little bush right here, some flowers, this kind of rough grass patch looking thing. Even the ground underneath is rough and defined and has little blemishes like this little rock right here. Because doing so really adds to the whole aesthetic of Ryza. Like Atelier Ryza a lot of the times is based around the wilderness, based around these woodland type of settings. So it's perfect to put a character like this on a base like this. And that's what makes this real genuine Atelier Ryza 1 to 8 scale figurine real. 
and genuine and great and worth the money. This fucking areola based looking ass is not worth it. This is a waste of money and time. I mean, I know that there's an obvious glaring price difference in quality in terms of the real anime figurine right here and the fake anime figurine, but I mean, putting them side by side really goes to show you the true differences. And I guess that's one thing you can take away from this video is that it doesn't matter how broke you might be, it doesn't matter how much money you might not have. If you're gonna collect anime figurines, just Put in the effort and just buy a real one. You don't have to buy, you know, ridiculously expensive $200, $300, $500, $1,000 figurine. But because there are some great affordable figurines out there, which A, will last, two, will look fucking fantastic, a lot of the times absolutely flawless, and three, is just a great way to support an industry. I mean, I would like to think that a big reason why people buy anime figurines is because they want to buy more anime figurines, and buying these fake, knockoff, shitty, fake anime figurines is not going to help the industry. It's just going to put money into the pocket of some random dude who is exploiting these series and IPs. So I hope you guys learned a little bit. Uh, I'm going to immediately dispose of these fake anime figurines because they just do not even deserve to be on this planet. And again, I encourage anyone to start getting into collecting anime figurines, even if it's just one real anime figurine. Like, that already looks freaking amazing. Like, that's already a good start. Again, you don't have to put in absurd amounts of of money. I know that if you want to get really expensive ones like this, you got to save up a little bit of money and that's completely understandable because at the end of the day, that money is going to be worth it. Especially if it's a character that you love. So please consider supporting the real figurine industries. These craftsmen and painters and sculptors put in a lot of time and effort into creating these figurines. So hey, you know what? You got to give them a pat on the back in some way. And again, if you would like to get the chance to grab hold of some of the more expensive anime figurines out there, then again, I do anime figurine giveaways. I gave away the Riser one two months ago and I gave away the Jubril one that you saw earlier in the video just last video. So if you would like a chance to get started on your anime figurine collecting or you just like to try and get your hands on a really expensive figurine for free, then hey, consider subscribing and joining in to those giveaways. And if you're watching this video right now and you find yourself holding on to a fake anime figurine or saying, Joey, I'm sorry, I'm guilty of buying a fake anime figurine. Well, then hopefully this video has taught you guys, A, that fake anime figurines are just not worth it. So don't buy any more in the future. And B, probably a nice, easy, clear way to be able to distinguish between a real and a fake anime figurine so that you don't make that mistake again. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about fake anime figurines. Have you bought them before? And what's your favorite anime figurine that you have? I like to know what is the type of anime figurines that you like collecting if you are a collector and hey if you're not a collector hopefully this video has maybe inspired you to start collecting them because they're freaking cool i love collecting anime figurines it's super dope and a great way to show appreciation towards your favorite characters anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one like your favorite if you enjoy subscribe for more better keep watching anime down it